Okay, base numero deux. Let's make a combinator, a mixer, and maelstrom. Yep, maelstrom, we're going old school this time since it has some nice and simple sounding shifting options. So, I'll just put in some notes. So those notes are in, let's name this hollow bass. And we're going to go into Maelstrom, initialize it, and then turn it to Sawtooth times 4 and Square times 16 for the second oscillator. I'll bring them both down a few octaves, or you could just play the notes lower, either's cool. Then for the Sawtooth, we're going to make the motion around the middle to so get this kind of phasey effect. Then the square, we want to keep still. So if we just show you the square on its own at the moment, you can hear it's got a lot of kind of motion going on in there. If we take the motion down to zero, keeps it still and makes a kind of a buzzy sound. However, we still want a lot of harmonics, so let's take the shift knob up slightly. Now, this gets a little complicated to explain, but bear with me. Each of the sounds you can load into Maelstrom is called a grain table. There's loads of them here. It's a sound wave split into grains. And the sound wave has a specific pitch, but Maelstrom uses some computer wizardry to define a new pitch, which are the notes you define in the sequencer. Here. Now, by changing the shift knob here, you change the pitch of the grain table. Now, you may be thinking, but what's the point, Dave? If the computer wizard is changing the pitch when the grain table is being played through Maelstrom anyway, why bother changing the pitch of the grain table? Well, have a think. Does a high piano note have the same tone as a low one? It sure doesn't. And this goes for any sound with a lot of harmonics in it, including saw waves and square waves. So by changing the shift parameter, you change the tone of the sound considerably. So I've brought the shift up to about 5 eighths of the way around, and you can hear how much the tone differs. Incidentally, modulating this down gives an awesome futuristic metallic kind of sound. Check it out. So, then send the square into the filter on AM mode. Bring up that resonance a bit, and maybe the filter, just to open it up, turn off the ENV, and I'll turn off this filter as well. Bring back in the sawtooth, and we'll have a listen now. And this filter, the AM filter, just gets an extra nice overtone. It's these strong overtones that will make your bass more interesting. So now we've got the bass ick tone sorted. Time for the long-winded process of setting up a multi-band distortion unit again. So, here we go. Let's make an audio splitter. Run a Maelstrom into it. Then one channel into the mixer and another into stereo imager. Get rid of this. Make sure it's on solo low band. Take the frequency down, about 300 hertz. Then run it into a mixer from the output, audio output. That's our low band. Separate out from high band into Another stereo imager. Leave the frequency at the middle, make sure it's on solo low band, and run that into the mixer for the mid range, and separate out high band again into the mixer. If we mute the original signal, we should get the signal back with these three bands now. There we go. Now, add a screen forward distortion unit to each band. I'm going to do that with the power of magic. Wow, that was quick. So for the settings on these, we're going to have, for the low band, let's solo it out, almost full damage control, we're going to have it on distortion mode, turn the P1 up right up to full, and the P2 nice and high as well, so it's nice and bright, no cut, and to the body to type E. And that just gives it a bit of extra warmth. For the mid band, again, we're going to have nice and high damage control. Distortion mode, full P1. Take the P2 right down. We're going to concentrate on the mid range this time, so take everything else out of the signal. And let's take off the body as well. There we go, nice and mid rangey. Thinking about it, it's a bit piercing at the moment, so let's move this oscillator B index here next to the motion along a bit. If we take a listen to the source sound, I'll show you what that's doing. It starts off quite high and piercing here, but it starts to bring in the lower frequencies as we move it along. There we go, that's a little less piercing. 
Here we go. And for the high band, we're going to have full damage control again. Tape mode, and nice and high on the P1, P2. Completely take out that low end. I'll show you what this sounds like. And bring up those highs. No body though. And with that set up, let's bring the level of each distorted band down to just above a half. Meld it in with the original and take a listen. Okay, so the tone is getting harsher. Now we need to make it wobble. This time I'll wobble it after the distortion. So we're going to right click on the mixer and create an ECF42 envelope controlled filter. Drag that right up to the top. And make sure it's in the right place. And link it up from the master out, input, out of that, in there. Now that that's linked up, we're going to set up the programmer, show programmer, to make the filter three, frequency, assigned to rotary one. Then draw in an envelope, I've already put one in here, and take a listen. Let's have a look at this one. Nice and wobbly, it still retains a vital bit of those overtones we added, and that will give the nice hollowness to the sound. Now if you want a mega tight wobble, just change it to LP24 as opposed to LP12. For a weaker one, as you heard, LP12 is fine. Next we're going to widen and thicken it with a UN16 unison unit. Detune it a tiny amount, so take it down a little bit, and leave it on 16, and take a listen to the sound. Okay, this has given us a nice thick tone, and it's time to add some more growl to the lower end. We don't want it too noisy, which is why we did the distortion before the filter this time, so we're going to do it with a maximizer. So right click, and make a maximizer, and that soft clip function we've been looking at is perfect. So we'll just turn that on, and bring the input gain right up to full as well. It'll kill the sound temporarily, but check it out. But check out what happens when we add some vocoders on EQ mode. One on 4 band and one leave on 16 band. Take a listen to it. Really brings out the growl, in fact so much that it's clipping. I have a feeling that these vocoders do some kind of multiband compression in equalizer mode, hence the full sounding tone. Now we're going to top it off with an EQ and a final maximizer to stop that clipping. So right click, create, EQ, and maximizer. We'll raise that high shelf, take the frequency right down to 3 kilohertz, and we're going to boost it by about 5 decibels, and the lowest Q you can muster. We're going to bring up around 3.5 kilohertz, so a little bit higher than that. Just a nice little peak there. And that just brings up the warm harmonics we'll find there. And we'll turn the limiter on. Take a listen to the sound now. Now that's cut off the clipping nicely, but it's lost a bit of the power. So we're going to turn off the 4 milliseconds look ahead. And we're going to turn the soft clip on and turn it to full. At the moment the soft clip does nothing, but when we turn the attack and release here to slow and auto, it just soft clips the start of the sound, giving a hollow tone from the limiter squashing it and then the sharper tone to the attack. So take a listen. Great stuff. And for a growlier tone, just turn the limiter off and pretend it's some sort of robotic Doberman. And for that bonus yo or yeah bass, we're going to create a Scream 4 unit. Turn off the curtain body, turn it to digital mode, and let's move this P1 to half and P2 to just above half, and take a listen with about a quarter damage control. <laughs> 
and this just bit crushes the sound, which is one of two ways I know of getting the yoy kind of sound. The other one is by using a formant filter, and there's one in Thor, so try playing around with that as well if you want to get some really talky basses. This one's a little bit messy because we've got a hell of a lot of distortion on it, but try it with some cleaner basses and see if you can get the sound you like. So there we have it. A bass more robotic than Arnold Schwarzenegger's acting, which I guess was fine for Terminator, and another bass more hollow and growly than my sister's stomach when she's on a diet. Sorry, Hannah. Tune in for day three, where I'll be putting together a nice throaty bass to make up our three bass katias, then topping it off, or rather bottoming it off, with a big old sub bass. Bye bye! If you found this video useful, like it and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Boy in a Band videos. You can follow me on Twitter, at Dave P. Brown, and if you want to improve your production skills, head over to the Boy in a Band forum at boyinaband.com forum, and sign up so you can share your songs to get new fans and valuable advice on how to improve your productions. Links for that in the description. Cheers for watching and have a nice day!